So the reason we're here is to look at the initial investigations with a project looking into calcareous soils are on the Upper Air Peninsula, which is dominated by soils rich in calcium carbonate or limestone, as most people know it. What soil scientists have is a simple field test to detect the presence of limestone in the soil. Uh, so it's a simple field test. We can support the laboratory tests, which give you a more accurate measurement, but it's a pretty handy uh, test to use in the field. So what I have here is dilute acid and that will react with any limestone in the soil material and will bubble if there's limestone present. We have analysed this stuff back in the laboratory and there's about 40% of this soil material is actually limestone itself. So what is it about these soils which we think are causing a problem? First, the presence of the limestone causes a very high pH. The combination of the limestone and the high pH means that these soils fix phosphorus very quickly and strongly. What I mean by fixing, I mean the phosphorus is converted to a form that's insoluble. If it's insoluble, the plants can't access it. So these paddocks have been in production for 60 to 100 years now. We've been putting out phosphorus every year on those profiles and yet the reserves of available phosphorus are very low. The other thing I guess it's a feature of these soils is that it's a, a medium which Rhizoctonia really enjoys. So Rhizoctonia is a soil borne fungus, attacks the roots of many crop plants and causes substantial pr uh, production losses, particularly in this environment because it just seems to really like these calcareous soils. So we have a very high load of Rhizoctonia inoculum in the soils, in the topsoil. It's always located in the topsoil. And this site's typical of that, with a very high disease burden. One of the things that doesn't happen in these calcareous soils is a tie-up of nitrogen. And this is a, a low production zone. It's had a very poor history of legumes, etc. And yet the nitrogen reserves in this profile are quite high. You know, we think that indicates that this is a fairly toxic and difficult profile and the crops aren't accessing what would normally be a very important nutrient for the crops to use. We talked about the fizz test earlier as a, a tool that soil scientists use when they're out in the field to make assessments of the soil profile. Another thing they don't go out into the field without is their pH indicator test. And I'll just show you how we go through that. Uh, I'll just take some material here from the bottom of the hole. And what the pH test is, is to give the, the soil scientists a measure of the, the pH of the soil while he's out in the field. So what I have here is a, a universal indicator. So it's simply a, a chemical which changes color with the pH. So fairly simple process of adding some of that to your soil material. And just to you know, highlight the color of that, we add a white powder to bring out the color of that dye. You can already see it's starting to go a purple colour. Now this indicator changes from a dull green in very acid conditions through to these blues and purples at high pH or an alkaline pH. And you can see this material is very highly alkaline right at the extreme end of the scale. Are calcareous soils unique to this area? Absolutely not. They're quite common through the landscapes of both the Victorian Mallee and also the South Australian Mallees. And there's also pockets of them in the medium and high rainfall districts in both of those states as well. So it is an important soil type for crop production, but certainly the Upper Air Peninsula has the most extreme manifestations of those soil types, and that's why the project is focused here. The research activity is going to continue for the next three years, and it's a major investment by the CRC for high performance soils, and is also funded by GRDC. Its major partners who are going to deliver that research is PERSA, which is the Agricultural Department in South Australia, New South Wales DPI, who have a lot of soil science expertise they're providing to the project, and CSIRO are also working on the soil microbiology and the water holding characteristics of these soils. So that's why we're here, and what we have is a demonstration site we've set up just to showcase the trial to the, to the local landowners and to demonstrate the sort of issues that we'll be tackling in the project. Okay, here we are at plot one. This is a plot where we've deep rip prior to sowing, but where we've added 
a material to try and add value to that operation. In this case, it's adding biochar, which has already been coated with a high rate of fertilizers as well. And it's our best performing treatment at the moment. So is that profitable? No idea, probably not. This is just showcasing it, but it's producing the best barley in this demonstration. We're now into uh, to plot two. This was a, a, a treatment to showcase the, the problem of fertilizer toxicity at sowing time on these calcareous soils. So the farmers are using quite low rates of fertilizer, but still are running into toxicity problems where a germination and emergence have been reduced by that, the fertilizer in and around the seed row. We've tried to showcase that issue here uh, by adding higher rates of fertilizer right into the seed row, and it's almost had no impact. And that's one of the issues with this environment. We really can't predict some of these things. We've got to understand the soil conditions better so we can manage the problems more easily. The next treatment we have in plot three, this is another deep ripping treatment. In this case, we've added an animal based manure to the, to the prior to the deep ripping to incorporate into to the soil to see whether that enrichment of the profile with organic matter and nutrients can improve crop production. And so far we've seen very little benefit of that. It's a treatment that works spectacularly in other environments. It's had almost no impact here at all. Number four, which we have here. So this is our benchmark. This is standard uh, practice for crop husbandry in this environment. You can see the crop production struggling on this soil type in this season. And a feature of these, so of these crops on this soil is uneven crop production. And you can see how wavy this crop is with extensive pore patches. One of the major contributors to those patches is rhizoctonia. And that's certainly causing these plots to struggle. And overall production is pretty poor. On my left hand side, it, in contrast, you can see some plots that have done really well in a pretty tough season. What's the difference between these two plots? This plot was deep ripped prior to sowing. Otherwise, the management is the same. Now, deep ripping is proving very popular on silicious sands. The history of deep ripping on calcareous sands is they don't work. Obviously, that's not the case here. Uh, major production increases, and we're looking at a 50% increase in biomass by deep ripping compared to our standard practice. What's the difference between this and, and where we've deep ripped before on these soil types? One of the differences is we deep rip with inclusion plates in this case. That's a far more vigorous deep ripping operation. And clearly you can see the barley production has benefited from that approach this year. Now the last treatment that we're showcasing in this trial is what we've called the anti rhizoctonia package. So this is our attempt to control the rhizoctonia, one of the major diseases in its environment. We've used a combination of extra fertilizer some ammonium based fertilizers which are known to have disease controlling properties in other environments and some fungicides which are registered for the uh, suppression and control of rhizoctonia and had had very little impact either on crop production or disease levels in this trial so again some of these products really are struggling to work in this environment we need to understand those so we can get better value from them once the project gears up properly next year, we'll have three other sites on the Upper Air Peninsula to investigate more intensely these issues of calcareous soils in slightly different locations. There'll also be a satellite site in the southeast of South Australia, so that's to contrast the behaviour of these calcareous soils in a very different environment. And none of this research will be any good if nobody hears about it. So an important part of our team are two local farming systems groups on the Air Peninsula uh, we're partnering with Air EP to make sure that the results get out to the landowners and the advisors. And in the southeast, McKillop Farm Management Group will be the extension vehicle for all the results and to communicate how the project's progressing with the local community. Go to the description bar below for the latest information, links and resources.